What's up crypto fans, it's Sam, back with another valuable cryptocurrency video today. If you are new here, please consider subscribing as it's free and you can always unsubscribe. We have new cryptocurrency videos coming out every single day, ranging from the latest in altcoin news to fundamental and technical analysis. And if you find this video helpful in any way, please let us know with a like or a comment in the comment section below and it really motivates me to make more when I see the likes and comments. Thank you so much. If you're holding Cardano right now, this is the video for you. As many of you guys already know, Cardano has huge ties to the people of Africa. In fact, Africa is their biggest and largest user base. By targeting the third world countries in Africa, Cardano kills two birds with one stone. They get heaps of daily users due to the huge density of people in many African locations, as well as they appear to be ethical and have motives to help less developed countries such as the ones present in the continent of Africa. And, a, and in a recent interview with Sky News, Cardano's intentions in Africa have surfaced more clearly. Cardano is accepted by so many African individuals as they have a mutually beneficial agreement. As I've previously mentioned, Cardano benefits from an increase in users and the individuals using Cardano benefit from the service Cardano provides. This strategy of targeting Africa is quite economically basic from the roots of it as it is simply a relationship of mutual independence. However, this is very effective. As you guys will already know, in the world there is a population of 7 billion, give or take 100 million or something. And the population of Africa alone is 1.2 billion. And of this 1.2 billion, half, if not the majority, don't have any sort of banking system. This means, for lack of more accurate maths, around 1 14th of the whole world's population is pretty much single-handedly adopting the Cardano coin and Cardano blockchain. In addition to the broader continent of Africa as a whole, Cardano has decided to dial in closer into one of the slightly more developed countries of Ethiopia. Many of you guys may already know this, but Cardano's vision in Ethiopia is to help as many students and teachers keep track of their records on Cardano's blockchain. This is otherwise known as the IOHK Ethiopia blockchain deal. And before we dive deeper into the deconstruction of the Sky News video, I think it's important we all know the exact details of what the actual Cardano deal is about in Ethiopia. I've curated this video for you guys that explains everything. The big announcement that led the show was the interview with the Minister of Education from the Ethiopian government that confirmed the deal you might have already heard about. Around 5 million secondary school students and 700,000 teachers are coming to the Cardano blockchain via the Ministry of Education app powered by Atala Prism. Now, bringing 5 million people into the system is going to take some time, and the onboarding for students and teachers is going to look something like this. In the first year, the goal is to get all 700,000 teachers at more than 3,500 schools across Ethiopia registered with the system along with a subset of students that will be issued a tablet with a dedicated network that will allow them to access Atala Prism. In the second year, the goal is to have all secondary school students registered, which is when we reach that 5 million mark. There is a lot of excitement about onboarding this many people in a single deal. It shows mass adoption at a government level and it is the biggest blockchain deal ever. But what's more important is that this technology is going to change the lives of millions and eventually billions of people. Sorry to cut the video there, I just have to say this is amazing to see in the crypto community as the man, because as the man said, this could potentially bring millions if not billions of people out of their monetary hardship. So how will Cardano execute this huge claim and what does it mean for Ethiopian students and teachers? Let's take a look at how implementing this technology will affect the people using it and the government's ability to help people rise from economic hardship. Once in place, teachers and students will both be keeping track of their performance. A student starting in the ninth grade will have four years of data for their educational record, and this will bring about a completely new way of evaluating the intelligence of a person and their strengths and weaknesses. One of the biggest changes this could bring about are final exams. The score you get on your final exam can determine if you can get into the college or university you want. This is highly inefficient when it comes to accurately determining someone's ability and intelligence, and oftentimes questions on exams can be worded oddly and the student might not understand and get it wrong, not because they 
they didn't know the answer, but rather they were confused about the question. But if a student has a long-standing history of excellent mathematics skills and for whatever reason did subpar on the final exam, they could reevaluate all that information and that student could still get into a university. Being able to track each student's skills in things like mathematics, chemistry, physics, English, their ability to read, and more will allow the MOE to pinpoint where things are succeeding and where they need to be improved. But this isn't limited to just students, it also includes teachers. The data could show that one teacher in a small village has an exceptionally high rate of educating students that excel in chemistry. This could lead to finding out what methods that teacher uses to communicate with students and bringing those approaches to new areas where students are struggling with chemistry. This data-driven approach to improving the quality of education in Ethiopia will elevate the entire country. Over the next few years, the goal is teachers and secondary school students, but the probability that this will encompass the entire school system from kindergarten to universities is a very high likelihood, and this will bring even more people into the Cardano ecosystem. Okay, so now we're all caught up with knowing that Cardano has plans to help millions and billions in the school system around Ethiopia and Africa to improve their education and get out of their economic hardship. This news really affects the price of Cardano every single day and new news like this surfaces all the time. So to stay up to date, make sure to subscribe to the channel where I upload news and updates like this every single day. And speaking of new news that has surfaced, let's get onto that Sky News clip that I've been talking about throughout this video. It comes from the African Operations Director of IOHK, John O'Connor. And this video interview is like no other as he answers some of the more difficult questions to answer. So let's have a look at the clip. Welcome back. Now in the last few years, digital transformation has been the key to Africa's financial development. Well now a blockchain infrastructure specialist called IOHK is claiming it can accelerate growth in the continent. It's partnering with the Ethiopian government to build internet infrastructure for its students. Well joining me now is John O'Connor. He's African Operations Director of IOHK. Uh, John, uh, welcome to you. I mean, as I understand it, fewer than one in five people have access to the internet in Ethiopia. Is isn't that a bit of a stumbling block for the for the adoption of uh, blockchain technology? Well, first of all, the solution which we are building and developing for the Ethiopian government actually runs within the school context. So along with the identity product that we built, the Ministry of Education is connecting up 3,000 schools to give them access to internet and infrastructure to make the pilot run. So uh, that, what are you attempting to achieve with this? What, what is the, the, the purpose of what you're doing? So the idea is by giving identity and enabling students as well as schools and the Ministry of Education to track educational performance, we can actually increase educational outcomes, uh, much like Tony Blair's Short Start program started by doing educational changes at a very young age and tracking the data that went along with that. We hope to give the ministry more ability to impact and make decisions over their resource allocation. From the student's perspective, they can also learn on what they're good at, what they're bad at and improve. And finally, once we get to the end of the educational system, students will be able to prove to employers with a verified identity that they've actually achieved what they say they have. And this is a massive challenge in Ethiopia. There's a big issue of fake credentials and fake degrees. And um, yeah, uh, this gives confidence to employers, ultimately driving employment. Okay, so this all seems pretty promising for African students and teachers, but where does Cardano as a company benefit from this? And what do you get out of it as a business? So we have a simple model, um, you know, this isn't a profit center for us, but we charge a very small software as a service model to the Ethiopian government. So for all of the analytics we provide, the um, uh, deployment engineers and the whole suite of management services that go around this, uh, we charge a nominal fee per student. Uh, but ultimately, as we say, for us, this is, uh, you know, trying to drive digital transformation in the country and isn't a core business unit for us. Um, are you comfortable working with the Ethiopian government? I mean, they're, they're, they're quite well known for shutting down the internet to sort of suppress dissent and criticism at any given moment. You know, ultimately, when you're trying to do digital transformation in emerging economies, uh, it's very easy to get drawn into the political side and some of the challenges that happen in these countries. From my perspective, this is a very clear project. Um, we're helping to drive improvements in education. Uh, for me, this is separate from any other sort of political considerations. You know, we're talking about improving the educational outcomes of uh, millions of children across the country. And for me, it's as, it's as simple as that. So what are the final thoughts for this video? 
Well, I have to say, as a Cardano holder, these are some extremely exciting times, and I definitely feel like the price of Cardano will naturally rise as the amount of users in Africa that they help rises. Overall, I think you guys should buy some Cardano if you don't already have any, as evident from this video, the coin will almost indefinitely increase in price. Yup, so that's about it for today's video guys. I really hope you thought this video was valuable or helpful in any way. Make sure to like and subscribe. My name is Sam and this is the end of another daily video from the Bitcoiner. I'll see you guys all tomorrow. Thank you for watching and have a great day.